Today, I want to share with you this little hack that I started doing whenever I had to pay for license renewals or even certificates, uh, even taxes, honestly. So if you want this simple little reframe hack, then stick around and I'm going to help you enjoy paying these sometimes frustrating fees. Hey everyone, welcome back to Design, Create, Inspire. First off, thank you for being here. Second off, I am a little sick right now, uh, so I'm gonna keep this short. I apologize now for m the sound of my voice and everything. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I got this out to you, but I also wanna keep it short so you don't have to listen to me for too long. Welcome if you're new here. I'm Bryn Young, I'm an architect here in San Diego, and if you are listening to me on the podcast, Design, Create, Inspire, thank you so much. Make sure you give us a five-star review so that more people can find us. It really makes a difference. And if you're over here on YouTube, hello, welcome. Make sure you subscribe so you can follow along all my architecture tips and tricks and stories and all that good stuff. So today I want to talk to you about this little reframe hack that I started doing a little while back because... And what made me think of it was this morning I was renewing my architecture license. So if you are an architect in California, every two years we have to renew. And it's on the odd date or odd year on the month of your birthday. So for example, it's 2023. So everyone who's licensed will have to renew their license this year. And my birthday's in January, so I have to renew by the end of this month. So when I sat down to pay, I was reminded how often I hear from people that they're frustrated about AIA dues or licensing dues, NCARB payments, all that kind of stuff. And I totally get it. It's expensive. If you haven't watched my video about how much it costs to become an architect, you should go watch that because I talk all about what it takes to become an architect. And then I also talk about all these extra fees and everything to even maintain license. So at first it was frustrating. I remember I got licensed 2020 in October or September. And so that next year was going to be an odd year. So I had to pay in October, 2020 to get my license. So I had to pay then. And then January of 2021, I had to pay my renewal already. So I had only been licensed architect for like three months and I already had to pay my renewal. I was like, this is silly. It should like go for an extra year or something. And so I remember feeling that kind of frustration, like, okay, another check to architecture board. And then at the end of this year, you know, AIA dues and NCARB dues, you know, I've paid like over a thousand dollars just in my dues to maintain all of this. And this doesn't even include stuff like LEED certification, any other types of certifications you have. So I hear often people say, oh, I want to get this certification next or this certification. It's like, get what you need because you need it or, or it's specific to what you're working on. But just remember that each one of those is going to come with some sort of continuing education, some sort of licensing fee, all that stuff. But when I sat down today to pay and renew my license, I thought, this is incredible. It took me 12 years from the first time I started school to getting my license. And now I'm sitting down and I'm just filling out a form I'm paying $300 and I'm keeping my architecture license. And I thought to myself that I had worked so hard to get to this point that I feel really grateful for sitting down and being able to renew this license because there had been years and years where I dreamed of having that license. And if you would have told me that it was just $300 to renew every two years, I would have happily done it because I would have made done anything to make it work. Plus, when you're going through the exams, those exams are almost $300. So it's, you know, you're paying that often when you're trying to pass them. So one thing I started doing is just being grateful to be able to pay those fees. 
even when, I mean, always you have to evaluate, is this worth it? Do I want to keep this certification or keep this association? And if it is worth it, then it's so wonderful because in order to be able to have that, I have to be a licensed architect. I have to have not had a felony within the last year. I have had to have worked on my continuing education. And that's really something to celebrate. I once heard this person, um, she runs like a multi-million dollar business. And she's someone that I often listen to for different business advice and tips and tricks. And I remember she said that with taxes. She said when she first started her business, she was really worried about having to pay taxes. and Like she did not want to do it. And then when she flipped the narrative and created a new story and instead said, wow, I'm so thankful to be able to pay these taxes because that means that I made enough money this year to pay taxes. And that was like such a light bulb switch because I can totally relate. I remember for so many years, it's like, oh, how much money am I going to get back from my taxes? Oh, I hope I get money back. But in a way, you're kind of saying, I hope I don't make any money this year. So Mm -hmm. the government has to pay me back money. And instead saying, oh, I hope I have to pay a certain amount in taxes. Of course, we don't want to pay taxes really, but... If you can understand that switch where, okay, I have to pay taxes. Well, that means that I made money and that means the business was profitable. And so I now think of it in that same vein when I'm paying certain dues and keeping up my license. So I'm going to keep this very short and to the point, but I think that having these really simple reframes Switching the narrative can completely transform your mindset, how you proceed in life, even things like if you're taking the architecture exams, switching it around like, wow, I failed, but I actually was able to sit for that exam and take it in order to fail, which means I'm like a thousand steps ahead of so many people. There's a lot of people who are just starting school and can't wait for the day where they can sit for their exams. And it's not about like lying or, you know, always being so positive. It's just these simple reframes that puts gratitude into the front seat rather than frustration. And do it over and over and over, even when it feels a little weird, but the more you do it, the more it'll become natural and the more you will start feeling grateful and appreciative and everything. So I have a homework assignment for you. Maybe you already do this. This is something my family and I have implemented now in our dinner times, but we all go around the table and we actually write it down now. We used to just verbally do it. I encourage you to write it down, but I want you to write down three things that you are grateful for. And I want one of those to be something that isn't the obvious. It's not like, oh, I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for being alive. Like make something a little different. Like I'm grateful for being able to pay the California Architects Board my yearly fees so that I can continue being a licensed architect. You know, something a little bit different in order to reframe. And I promise you the more you do it and the more you practice that, it's going to start becoming second nature. So let me know what you think. And if you are brave, I'd love to hear your three things that you are grateful for. Please leave a comment. If you're over on the podcast, head over to YouTube and leave a comment there or come shoot me a message on Instagram. I love to connect with you. Okay. Have a wonderful day. And If you don't want to wait until next week for a new episode, make sure you check out this episode next.